Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Drawer channel and in today's video I'm going to share the second part of my policies and methods for semi-paperless filing. This is part of a series on my ADHD brain and all of the systems that I use to compensate for a lack of internal structure and organization. So in the first video on paperless filing, I talked through my policies for recycling or pitching paper and then which files I physically keep. I also shared that Evernote is my main service for paperless filing and that there are three cool tools that I use in conjunction with Evernote. The first was the built-in photo attaching tool and the second is the scannable app. Okay. So if the document that I want to save electronically is longer, like say five pages long, I will usually save that as a PDF using Scannable. I love this app that was created to work beautifully with Evernote. You don't even need to snap the picture. You just hover over the document and Scannable will do it for you. It takes no time, less time than waiting for a scanner to feed the document, frankly, and you have a PDF to attach to your note. Hover then hover, then hover. Anyway, you get the idea. Once you finish, you can reorder the pages, you can change the name, you can choose between saving it as separate images or as a PDF, and then when you hit save, it actually just saves it to a note in Evernote directly. Watch. So let's go into Evernote and see. Here it is. So if AutoScan is giving you fits, you can hit the three dots for more options and change it to manual mode instead. You can also change the default Evernote notebook that scans are saved to. You can see why I haven't replaced my scanner. The scans are nice and readable, it's fast, and I don't have to shell out $150 or more for another piece of equipment. The third tool that I use along with Evernote is Pocket. So two things about stuff that I want to save from the internet. If the document is long like a manual for an appliance, instead of saving the entire document, sometimes I will just save a link to it so that I can get back to it later on. Also, if I want to save online things like articles or web pages or recipes, I find that if I send them directly to Evernote or if I copy and paste directly, I get a lot of problematic formatting. So my solution to this is to use Pocket. Pocket is a service and an app that is for collecting internet articles so that you can read them later. So let me show you what I mean. This is in my iPad again. So let's say I tried to copy and replace and paste this recipe into an Evernote note. I select a, a chunk of it, then I hit copy. So now I'm gonna go into Evernote, I'm gonna create a brand new note, and paste. Okay, so this is not bad, right? But I have a bunch of stuff that I wanna get rid of, right? Like all this stuff here, well, you can see that's the problem. You soon find that getting rid of strange for formatting in Evernote is not that easy. See? So it's better actually just to start the note without any of that formatting at all. So here's what I do instead. So first of all, you have to make sure that you have Pocket installed on your iPad or your iPhone. And now go into your recipe and choose to share it. So one of the options that comes up for sharing is Pocket. Choose that and it will confirm that it saved the article to Pocket. Okay, now go into Pocket and it might take a couple of seconds, but here's my recipe, nice and clean. Now from here, choose the sharing button and you can see it already plays nicely with Evernote. So choose Evernote and it gives you an interface to change the notebook, to change the title, and even to add some tags. Choose to send this to Evernote and it's done. Now check Evernote and you can see that the recipe is there, stripped of formatting. Photos and text are easy in this formatting to delete or move. So the other place I store paper electronically is Google Drive. The reason I would put something in Google Drive is that I have a lot more space there, so if a PDF is too large, I may choose to stick it in Google Drive instead. In addition, if I'm scanning chapters of a textbook, for example, I prefer to put that in Google Drive since I find it a lot easier to use um, Google Drive as a table of contents within a folder. In those cases, I also put a note into Evernote, 
with a link to the folder or to the file in Google Drive as a cross-reference, since Evernote is always the first place that I look for things. So let me show you how to save stuff to Google Drive from the Scannable app. Here's my document in Scannable again. And now instead of saving it, I'm going to choose to send it. So now I have the option to either, either email it or share it. I'm going to choose share, and then I'm going to add to iCloud Drive. Now from the Google Drive app, I hit the plus sign to add a document. Then upload, and then I choose iCloud Drive, and there's my document to add, and done. So I also use Google Photos to store kids' crafts, memorabilia, and printed photos. Look for my separate video on this. So that's it. I'm not over the top obsessive about getting things into digital format, but the bulk of what I need to access is always at my fingertips in Evernote or Google Drive. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you handle this below. And thanks for watching.